painting of a Mars scene and show you my technique. Within this picture here, it's very plain. It's like really void of color. And my style is that I like to change things around. I don't like to paint exactly what I see. I use the photo strictly as a reference and I create from there. I work in a variety of pastels from hard sticks, which I start off with. And then I gradually move into softer sticks called Rembrandts. And then I finish up my paintings with some very super soft pastels called Unison or Snellier or Schmink. And I'm going to begin this painting by basically just breaking down things into shapes. That's what I always do first. I just I don't pay attention to a lot of detail. I just quickly map it in. And right here I'm just going to get the basic shapes onto this picture and I'll start. And the trouble thing is not to get too tight with the sketch. Again, it's, you're going to lose this sketch completely. It's just to map out where I'm going to put some colors. And I'm using vine charcoal right now, which is easily just appears once I put my color on. So I'm not too concerned about that. I got some kind of a tree line back there. But basically, that's it. Very, very void of detail. When I do a landscape, I usually like to have kind of like a white sky in the background. It kind of makes the colors pop that are in the foreground. So I pretty much stay away from like real blue, cerulean colors, depending on the subject, really. But mostly, I start off with really light background colors. Again, I use an ivory white. And I'm going to actually, again, using the hard stick, I'm going to start mapping out my colors onto this picture. And the thing with pastels is you don't have the luxury of having a palette. Everything is applied right to the paper. Your only palette really is a, probably a scrap piece of paper. And the paper I work on, by the way, is called UART. And it's sanded. It's very rough, very coarse. This is a 500 grit. And I like it because I put a lot of pastel into a paper. It's very heavy body paintings. So I need a good support. Right now I'm concentrating back here the sky area. Then there's some water right below it. And then there's a water right down here, like a stream, the marsh. So again, I use far the colors that are in the sky. I put them into the water as well. So I'm actually going to put some of this ivory white into the water. And right here I got some. These are foundation colors that I start with. I don't go right into using bright colors, really warm colors, until I'm halfway through the painting. So basically this again is an underpainting. Mapping out the colors, get this in here, and I like to start blending this a little bit, smoothing it out. I put it down first because when I put my other colors on, I don't want to get the sky muddy. And I also don't want to get the water too dirty as well, which can happen. I chose to do a marsh scene because I've done so many, and of course we're limited for time, so I wanted to give you, again, this demonstration of how to get something this done within an hour. So, you don't want to spend too much time thinking about it. There I have it. The other colors that I use is my foundation colors, indigo blue. Again, I'm still using the hard sticks because I want to get this pastel into the, the surface of the paper, the paper. If I use really soft pastels first, this paper will just eat them up. It's like talcum powder. So now I'm going to map out some dark colors using burnt umber, cerulean blue, and almost like a bottle green. And I always start with these colors, even with bright paintings. If I'm doing a wildflower scene, I'll have these underneath. It's kind of like a signature 
style that I kind of develop, you know, as you go along in your career as painting, we all flock to certain colors, things that work best for us. Again, this area here is going to mimic these tall grasses. We're just mapping that in. It gets darker here in the foreground. And again, notice I'm not using color, the local color that I see in this picture. I'm creating my own vision here. My own, what I feel that it should be. I think with painting, yes, this involves your skill and your knowledge of the medium, but it's very important to have your imagination in there as well, because it makes it your own. Now I'm going to add some of this burnt umber on top. Kind of gives it like a little natural look here. I always figure this, <laughs> during this stage, I call it the ugly stage. Because there's so many grooves and gaps coming through and it's hard to see anything. But the picture will eventually materialize. Down a little bit. Maybe just a little bit up in the background here. Now I'm going to add some of the green on top. By the way, I have people watching here, so if you have any questions, you can go ahead and write them down, and they can relay them to me. Next in the background here, I've got trees. Uh, and when I have to push trees back, I usually use violets, blue violets. And I'm actually going to put that down for my background trees. I want this to go way off into the distance, and I want it to kind of be like a haze. I think even in summertime, when you look at a field, especially a really hot summer day, there's almost a haze to the background of the trees, the hedgerow. And I always try to incorporate that into my pictures. There's colors. Now, <clears throat> as you develop your painting, or if I've been developing work throughout the years, you come across little ideas, things that you never did before, and all of a sudden, you're not afraid to take risks. And I, for one, am not. So what I've developed is, and when I teach this one method, the students really seem to like this a lot. And what I'm going to use now, pastel, we always know that you just start blending, um, use your hands a lot, use your fingers. But I am going to do what I call my wash. And the wash is basically turpenoid. I'm actually going to paint now with the pastel. What I like to do is also is I can see these tall grasses. I'm actually going to use this brush to mimic the, the, um, the grasses coming up and I'll actually wash the whole background with it. So just a little bit. Now I'm going to start painting. And I'm not worried about the drips either. I'm going to incorporate them into my painting. Now we're getting that nice wild grass look. I'm going to incorporate this too. I'm going to leave these, you know, kind of like this, this technique come through once I'm done with the painting. I'm going to let these brush strokes shine through. Water goes, of course, we're looking at left to right. So I'm just going to take that. Look at that instant marsh. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Wow. 
wash that background there a little bit. I'm not doing the sky. I'm not putting any turpentine oil on that because I don't want to get that murky. And that will happen. I have a question here. Why turpentine and not alcohol? Turpentine oil dries quickly, dries a little bit faster. I mean, you could definitely use alcohol if you want. I People said, why not use water? It just takes way too long. But I've always used the turpentine. Again, it dries quickly. And if it's not going to dry too quickly, then I have my handy dandy there. very quickly I like the darkness of this like the, the lush feel when you when you're using this a, a wet medium on it but now real quickly this won't take long of course it doesn't work either <laughs> We're all fast and we're going to dry it. And the whole painting is just going to become very light. All these colors, these nice dark colors, are giving me the underpainting that I want. And often I'll go back into it while it's wet as well. Uh, so when I'm painting here, i got some wet areas, I want more of an opaque look. I'll go ahead and use some salt pastels right on top of the wash. And that's good enough right there. And even though some areas are still damp, I can still paint on top of it. Right now I'm going to start blending in my background, these trees in the back. And I did put some like a real light blue on there, like a light lavender. But now I'm also going to put maybe a little bit of purple at the base. Are you using the indigo blue, palm green, and brown blue pastels first? Yes. They're pretty much the colors. I don't know how I gravitated to, to them, but they're pretty much the colors I always use in painting as my underpainting. And again, I, I, I stay away from the light colors or warm. So right now, I'm just going to kind of use my fingers here and just push this pastel around in the back. Keep in mind, I'm not gouging my fingers on this. It's just a very light touch. And I want these, these trees to kind of recede in the sky a little bit. So what I'm going to do is take it and push it into the ivory white sky. So it gives it more of a hazy look in the back there. I'm going to add just a little bit more white on top of the trees here, so they're not so dark at the canopy, or the top of the canopy, I should say. Okay, now I'm going to start moving into some softer pastels, such as Rembrandt. And I'm going to kind of lighten the sky back here a little bit with it. And also to mimic some kind of growth that's sticking up in front of the sky, back here where the sky touches this, um, this background of land, I don't want it to have it such an even straight line going across. So what I do to mimic some kind of growth in the background at my horizon, I'll gently take the color that's there and push it up into the sky. And it softens that line, plus it mimics some maybe trees, uh, shrubbery, something that's back there. And what I'll do is add us a little bit more of the green. Going in the direction of the growth which is vertical, and again push that up into the sky there. Notice how I'm working from top 
to the bottom, which means I won't still go back up there. But I like to start off that way because a lot of times if I'm concentrating too much down here and I start working up here, the dust is going to fall on top of my imagery and I don't want to get it dirty. Now we're going to add a little bit more of the white into the water here. Not everything has to be blended either. I like to have some of that, um, the marks that I make to the pastel kind of shine through. So I've got to be careful not to blend too much. You just have to know when to do it, when to turn it on and when to turn it off. Now in my background here, <coughs> I've got my horizon, the grasses are lighter and they kind of get darker as we come down to the foreground. So what I'm going to do is I'm not too keen on this light brown, this dead growth back here, so I'm going to start adding a lighter green. And this one here is more like an olive. And I'm just going to take the side of it. Now this is a soft stick, in unison. And I'm just going to start making some highlights back here. There we go. Again, push it up a little bit into the trees. So we kind of close that gap back there. I also am going to start actually extracting some masses here. I see this dark area here. I'm going to kind of leave that alone and make it look like the shadow of grasses that are pushed in the background. And so I'm going to leave it there. If you can see that one area, it's dark. What I'm going to do now is put some light green on top of that. Because I don't want everything so solid. There we go. God, I feel like Bob Ross, a happy little green. Isn't it something? There we go. Now, where else can I put it? So there's the paintings uniform. So there's some overall tone to it. I'll also put it back here. There we go. Not too much, just being suggestive. Where else? In here. It's amazing with just a few strokes we can achieve without having to get too much into the detail. There we go. Now I'm going to add some more of my indigo blue. I'm going to work down here for a little bit. Darker grasses. So I'm going to put that in there. I'm doing it at the base, again, to create shadow. <laughs> sure, Linda. <laughs> Anything for you. <laughs> now I'm going to add some. In my shadows, I always like to incorporate blues and purples for a darker area. So I'm also going to put some purple on top of this indigo. Mm -hmm. You want 
I consider these strokes my brush strokes, and I don't want to lose them. So I'm going to make sure that a lot of them stay there. It gives a more of an impressionistic look. I don't have to blend everything. But what I do like to do, though, I'm going to get some now, some dark brown, and also incorporate that into the shadow. And I got reeds here in the front. Bring those up. There we go. And now I'm going to use some almost like a cobalt blue down in the shadow areas. And this is where you can actually take your finger and just kind of soften that a little bit. That kind of gives it like that soft haze, purple haze. I'm making decisions as I go along here. Um, there's no set format. Nothing was really mapped out. And I kind of like it that way because it kind of frees you up without having to think about it too much. Just do it. Again, let's add some more of our, our number down there. We'll get a little bit darker than that. Again, I switched in now to really you know, soft pastels. I'm using Rembrandt's. And I'm just going to take my finger and just kind of drag some of them up. Simulate some of the reeds. Okay. Hmm, it's going to go where I want to put it here. Now I'm going to start adding some warm tones to it. So this one here, again, okay, I'm still in, using a new pastel. I want to start mimic, <coughs> mimicking some of the reeds, so I'm just going to start putting these warm tones into the grasses. Very light touches. I'm going to drag some down so it looks like they've got some reflection coming into the water here. All these grasses. Okay. Now let's get some volume to this. I want some more tone into my color here. I'm more tone into the grasses. So I'm going to use a soft pastel. This is like a, a burnt umber. Get some color going on here. Keep in mind, just like any other medium, your colors will blend. So with this, I'm going to put some more green on top of that burnt umber I just put down. Blending the two. Kind of sideways strokes, vertical. to the foreground. Let's add a little bit up here as well.
also going to add some, kind of like a magenta, to the background grasses. Kind of take your eye back there, like there's some kind of flowers or some kind of growth that's happening. down in here. Again, I'm not blending as much as I do on some of my paintings where it's completely blended. These smaller ones, I just like to have the lines come through. I like to see that texture uh, mimicking nature. Just a few dabs and strokes can instantly give you, um, whether it's tree or grasses, just how you apply it can suggest it without being too detail oriented. Just trying to capture the scene. Now this can also be used now for a study for a larger painting if I want to. Um, I'm going to take some more of my soft whites. And again, just kind of chisel in some highlights of the water. And usually when you're dealing with a marsh scene, sometimes the water creeps in behind some grasses, kind of goes beyond and so what I'll do is take that and kind of put it back there a little bit make it kind of come and go in different little areas And addressing this area again, I like to try to drag some of the colors down into the water. So I'm going to use more of a cobalt blues. That is. I'm going to take my finger and just go sideways with it to mimic the water. Bring it on down. Leave it alone right there. Also to address up in here, usually when we have a marsh scene or if you're looking at the base, there's some dark areas that kind of ground it. You know, what are coming out, they're growing. And also you can see dark line back there. So what I'll do is take a color that's not so dark like a dark brown, but I'll kind of give just a little line to show you where the grasses are coming out of the water. And often you can just kind of bring it down into the water. Kind of soften it up back there. The kind of, instead of grounds, it doesn't look like it's just floating on top. Same can be done down in here. Again, going back to my indigo. suggest that I have some reeds coming up but first let me get there's still some areas up in here I want to address and so I want to get a little bit lighter and somehow <coughs> it 
pretty much towards the back and right now it's kind of like an even tone all over. So I need to break this up a little bit. So now I'm going into almost like a very pale yellow and I'm just gently dragging that on top of the green in the background here. Just so it kind of leads your eye to the back. suggestions, little marks. Not too much. There. Now I want to suggest some of the reeds that are coming up. And often without having to use a color, I'll just, uh, just basically, basically use a charcoal pencil to start off with, and I don't want them so planned, so <clears throat> where they're just vertical. I want to kind of have it, they're wild, so they're blowing all over the place. So I'll just start flicking, just like that. Next, I'm going to add some tone to the water, and again, I'm going to use almost like a light lavender. I like shadow areas. And I'm not too concerned about those marks I just made because they're, in, again, very light charcoal. They'll just disappear. I can always get back over those. those trees. I'll do a little bit of blending. Going back to my brown. Again, keep in mind this is a very limited palette too. I'm not using every color out of the box. Just for some pull your eye in, what I like to do too, and also with the waters, again, I always use a lot of blue and purple for my shadow areas, but then I also like to take a lighter blue and just little, little hints of this color in the water gives it more of a hazy feel to it. This right now seems, reminds me of a, like it just rained. And then bring some more of the green into the water for reflection. Not a lot, just right at the base. And I'm leaving my marks alone, just, just putting them in there. It has more of an impressionistic feel for me. Um, I don't want to lose these marks, I like them. And the other thing is too, is like when do you stop? Well, you just have to always remember, when in doubt, leave it out. If you have the slightest doubt of what you're doing, let it alone. Too often we think of, uh, look for divine inspiration that's going to help save the painting. 
when all you really have to do is just back away from it. Just a few more colors and I'm just going to kind of address this part right up in here. It's a little too chunky for me. It's not... <clears throat> Let's just see if we can get some light colors in. Not, not too much. Maybe some lines. of it down in here. And maybe up in here just a little bit. There we go. And I'll take what I'm using here. It's called, it's almost like a purple maroon. It's called prune. And it's light, but I'm going to use this on top of the charcoal for some more reeds. And then carry them up into the water. I'm going to, sometimes I like to break the border. We have all this linear um, plane back here. But the reeds sometimes are tall, so why not have a couple go up into the sky? And like again, I'm doing that to break that border back there. Everything's kind of the same on the same plane. And, you know, it does, this leads your eye to the back. Okay, we have a cluster over here coming out of the corner. I also don't want to overkill it, but. Again, a few more little traces of this cobalt. And I am pretty much finished with my painting. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed it. Again, uh, you can email me or you can get in contact on Facebook if you have any more questions about it. Uh, again, this whole process from start to finish probably took me a good 40, you know, 40 minutes. The thing is, don't get too caught up in the detail. Make sure that you have a, your palette ready to go. Be loose with your painting, and it's in gradual stages. So I appreciate you checking in with me. Thank you.